Welcome to the Larry Timko Podcast. It's June 16th, 2020, and for the first time since January 13th of 2020, when uh, my last day at iHeartRadio, I'm here with Bill Siebert, my former co-host. How's it going, Bill? Hey, how's it going? So, We've been through a pandemic and then some, haven't we now? Man, i tell you what, the last five and a half months <laughs> have been absolutely insane. Absolutely, but hey, I'm doing good. I'm strumming along in life and... Yeah, you're you know, working. You're chumming along at two two jobs. Two jobs now, yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's 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 the life right now. What can I say? And meanwhile, I'm just sitting around playing the waiting game. Yeah, <laughs> which I'm really sucks. I'm going nuts waiting. Yeah, I'm 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 with you there, man. I'm waiting for you to to get to get hooked up somewhere here because somebody's missing out on a, on a damn good sports show. Too. Well, sports, anything right now anything. in the radio at this point, <laughs> it doesn't have to be sports, but we like to talk sports, that's for sure. But well, now, that's what we're here to talk about tonight, though, that's for sure, well, right? Really- and, and, you know, I got, I got to say this, too. I, I, one thing I've been, uh, that, that's, that's really upset me over the pandemic and the COVID virus, probably more than anything, is the fact that my Blues haven't had a chance to defend their cup. That, that's, that's really, I'm wearing the hat. You can see I'm wearing the hat. Or you, yeah. can, you can see I'm wearing a hat at least. Well, but, it's funny you bring up hockey, but too. But that's, that's the one thing. And they're coming back, and they're yeah. coming, and we're going to have a hockey. I'm not, and we'll get to that. I'm not really too happy with the way they've got things lined up. But. Well, it's funny you bring up hockey, too, because in recent hockey news, the Buffalo Sabres just did an overhaul, fired their general manager, and took it out on the Emirates, too. And the yeah. Emirates are actually really good for a minor league team. Um, AH, AHL bound cup for two years in a row, and mm-hmm. it would have been three years in a row if it wasn't for this whole COVID-19 thing. But they fired their general manager, their head coach, everything. So They gutted it. They gutted the entire organization, it seems yeah, like. Yeah, right and they're talking about possibly the owner might be going through some financial problems as well. So There's a, there's a lot of things going on in, in the world of hockey as far as players that may be from one year to another jumping from another team, so to speak. Yeah, and of course the Tampa Bay Lightning. It's, it really stinks right now, this whole COVID-19 thing, because you got the Lightning that were good, the Rays were looking good. We might, we're might we probably not going to have baseball this year. And of course the Bucs we'll get with to Tom that. Brady. We'll, we'll, get, we'll yeah. definitely get to that. I, I'm still holding out hope. but I, I'm, You're I'm more optimistic than I am at this yeah, point. I mean, it's it's bleak. I mean, I mean, if you want, we can talk about baseball right now. I've been geared up for it all day, to be honest with you. I've been talking about. It. I've been, I've been actually. You know, I, I guess I'm in the minority at this rate, but I, I'm actually on the owner's side with this because of so many different reasons. I mean, the players have come out and made it clearly known that they just are. They want their money. They want 100 percent of their money and nothing less. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I mean, to, if in I, the, the owners put out the last proposal that they put out was for 44 percent of the season for the players to get. 36% of their pay, but they would get an 80% prorated salary. Mm-hmm. That's pretty good for playing 44% of your games. You're getting almost all your money right there for the for the amount of games that you're playing. And that's what these guys don't understand. These guys want their $20 million, $7 million a year, whatever contract they sign. Mm-hmm. When, uh, when there's people out there right now that literally, like we just talked about, yeah, I'm one of the very few that's working two jobs right now. I'm very fortunate. I'm very lucky to have those two jobs right now. because I, I know a lot of people that don't have one job right now like the gentleman sitting right next yeah, to me. No doubt. So there's it, it, there's people out there that aren't making a dime that haven't made a dime since. To be January fair, I'm only looking for radio jobs for that though. <laughs> and, and here we are, and here we are. We got mi- millionaire players talking about no, I, I'm not going to play because I can't get my seven million dollars, and I'm only going to get one. Yeah, you know that that's just inexcusable. That that's a, that's a poor that's a that's a poor excuse for 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 an athlete right now in this time of a pandemic that we're going through. Well, throughout it's not the just the players. World. I read that eight eight owners do not want to play this season either, and I can see that too. And then uh, shame on those owners. Yeah. I, that's all I can say to that. I, I mean, and there's and there, and I'm sure there's individual players that don't care. You know, I'm sure Aaron Judge is probably one. He's only going to make nine hundred thousand dollars anyway. Yeah, I, I don't think he really cares one way or the other. He probably just wants to go out and play ball. But this doesn't count as an accrued season, right? So if it doesn't, I, I don't if, know how they're going to account. If it doesn't, because because be the Red Sox get scammed, Mookie Betts doesn't get to play for the Dodgers. If that's the case, you know. Yeah. How about Alex Cora getting the light off the suspension too? If yeah, they exactly. only play forty four games, I mean, you mm-hmm. know, he's getting really mm-hmm. a, a light deal. Because I don't know if anybody heard that, but he was suspended for the entire season, of course, um, for because the of his, his doings <laughs> in the 2017. I believe that they were cheating as mm-hmm. well. Uh, same year, we this all broke right, right. All this cheating scandal. You and I never really got a chance to really discuss any of this. No, and shame on the Houston Astros. Those those apologies that they laid out afterwards were, in my opinion, completely, uh, completely yeah. just just Matter ridiculous. Fact, my last Instagram and Facebook post from the studio was me holding up a newspaper with uh, Joey Cora saying, "You're fired." Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're <laughs> you right. You're right. So it's like, uh, it's like, oh man. And then that was it. Yeah, and that was the end of that. But I know it's like I focus on the Tampa Bay sports right now. 
the Lightning. We've talked about the Rays and the Bucks. Mm-hmm. It's just it, this whole COVID nineteen really shut down Tampa and really bad Bucks, because this is the first time that all three teams were legitimately good. And then now that the Bucks get Tom Brady at the same time, <laughs> the Bucks get Tom Brady in the Tom Brady. pandemic. And pandemic. pandemic. But I'm still, but I'm uh, still holding there's out. Still gonna be there's fo- there's going to be football, yeah. though. And that I'm psyched up about, yeah. to be honest with you. because that And, and that we can talk about all, all you want to because I am I am so on board. And, and, and this I've been on – and now I have said on your show in the past, mm-hmm. uh, whenever we have talked seriously about Tom Brady and Bill Belichick, I've always called Tom Brady the GOAT. I've always said he's the greatest quarterback that I've ever seen. He's, he's better than Montana. As much as I love Joe Montana – Tom Brady has just done it all, man. Mm-hmm. He's done so much more. And, and and I think he's a big, big part of why New England went year after year. Look at last year. He had no one to throw the ball to. Hardly that running game was really a shell of itself of what it could have been. And he still put up great numbers as a, as a starting quarterback in the league. I think now with weapons and everything around him and a revamped offensive line, which the Bucks have done, I think you're going to see a hell of a quarterback come out. I think you're going to see a hell of a team in Tampa Bay this year as well. There is a lot of talent in Tampa Bay. Don't let me get off track on that. Mm-hmm. But here's my situation, and this is what I'm thinking. All right, first of all, Tom Brady has a lot to prove, too. He's got a chip on his shoulder because oh, yeah. he has to prove that I'm not a system quarterback. It wasn't Bill Belichick was the reason. I was, it was me. So mm-hmm. now he's got to put this team on his shoulders. But I've seen – I've been a diehard Dallas Cowboy fan my whole life, and there's a team with a lot of talent that just could not get over the hump. Now, I look at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and you got a brand-new quarterback who's 43 years old. I know he looks ageless, but he didn't look that ageless towards the end of last season. Granted, he had no wide receivers to throw to, and his running game wasn't really that great. Sonny Michel, come on, man. His second year, eh. he, he doesn't really have much of a running game here in Tampa Bay, as far as I'm concerned, either. I know you, you're hoping for a rebound from Ronald Jones. No, 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 no. <laughs> no you don't there's think other, so? There's other guys in the mix There's now. other guys in the mix now. I don't know. You know who's been, uh, been spending a lot of time with Brady and Gronk and, and the boys down in uh... – on the pla- on the on the pra- on the high school practice fields right now because you know they've been doing workouts right oh yeah yeah well, no and coaches no coaches and everything but but mm-hmm. they've got the playbooks and everything and, and all mm-hmm. that going on and uh, and from what I'm hearing uh, oh, uh, I'm gonna butcher his name but Ogawande remember that guy mm-hmm. from he's spending year. a lot of time down there with Tom Brady and the guys I'm just mm-hmm. saying that's just rumors that have been, that I've heard that have come out all right so I envision him to be like the James White in this M- offense maybe maybe yeah. but the Bucks also drafted a guy in the seventh I, I think in the seventh round pardon me I haven't looked at I I, I can't remember where they drafted him at. Mm-hmm. but the running back they drafted in in the draft is a guy who's gonna be a sleeper as well I think he could very well be that kind of third down back James White type of yeah. player as I well just, I don't trust so rookies. I think the Bucks I don't know. I don't know who's going to be that primary running back for the Bucks right now. I think it's up in the air, and I think it's going to be a job that's going to be won uh, straight out of training camp, to be honest with you. But I think the Bucks are in it for the long haul, and I really think that honestly, to be they they are going to, they are going to contend every right for this division to be for, for first place. Every every right to contend for first place in this division. I look at this team, and I, I think they have a top ten defense. I'll give you that. Their front seven. Their defense has come along very. I think that was one of the big things that improved last year. Why we, it gives them a chance to win this year. We talked about yeah. this two years ago. Why why is he drafting all these young defensive backs? I'm like telling you, this is going to pay off in two, three years down the road, but we're going to pay for it now. And we did for yeah, the first, right. you know, right. but I said, right. just wait two, three years down the road. These guys are going to come together and it's going to be a really good secondary. And right now this is a very underrated secondary I that I think is going to get its accl- acclamations during the season when they start making interceptions and getting all these pick six. And they're the reason why they're winning the games. And, and <laughs> you know, also, I don't think, it's, also, I think it's going to be this defense more than it's going to be Tom Brady and, or the reason why the Bucks win this season. Also to add in what you just said about the secondary, they just drafted the kid from Minnesota. Um, mm-hmm. um, the uh, what was his name? I'm sorry, I'm dr- I'm I'm drowning on names tonight, guys. My bad. That's all right. We don't have our computers in front of us. Yeah, exactly. we're just kind of winging this. Um, yeah. But anyway, the the kid they drafted, uh, Winfield, mm-hmm. Winfield Jr., the kid they drafted out of Minnesota, the the safety. He's that kid's a stud. He's going to be, in my opinion, one of the best defensive players to come out of the draft period. And the Bucks mm-hmm. got him in a pure steal right. with that pick. I just don't. So I s- think I think that's going to be a big time key yeah. for the Bucks. My thing is, is if Brady's got to throw the ball forty times a game, they're not going to win. They no. need to establish a ground game and time, you know, time of possession. That's going to be the key for this offense. Yeah, you got Mike Evans. Yeah, you got Chris Godwin. Honestly, I think Gronkowski is going to be brought in more as a coach, more than he's going to see playing time. I think he's only going to see maybe 80, 90 plays the I, whole season. I agree with you, with you on that. I, but I, he's but, number three on the depth chart. O.J. Howard and Cameron Brady. No, 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 no. I, I mean, I can agree with you at a certain points where he's, he's might more not, a coach. I don't think he... <laughs> I don't think he's going to play every play. I can agree with you on that. But I think he will get a majority of the snaps, to be honest with you. I think he will be the number one guy. He'll I be don't. in there for all the primary situations. That's all I'm saying. Now, I think you will see a good deal of Cameron Bright and O.J. Howard. I think the Bucks are going to still run a lot of two tight end sets. I, I hope so. I really do. I, I don't see why they wouldn't. Why else would they get three quality?
quality tight ends on the mm-hmm. team. But I, I mean, really there's think, no reason why they wouldn't. Yeah. And Cameron Braid's not going yeah. anywhere. Then I don't think they're going to trade him. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, yeah, I don't I, think they're going to trade. Yeah. I thought they were going to trade OJ Howard. I was dead mm-hmm. set, sold it there, and I and I know they tried. They actually did try and trade OJ Howard, but yeah. it didn't. It fell through with the Washington right. Redskins. Here's my prediction right after the draft. Rob Gronkowski will finish with less receptions and yards than Jason Witten did last year in his final season Ooh, with Dallas Cowboys. That, that, that's a bold prediction because I'll be honest with you, I can't, I can't see that. Yeah. I see Gronk having a, yeah. having a good year. I'm not going to say monster yeah. year, yeah. but I can definitely see Gronk having a pretty good I, year. I really think he, he was brought in to teach Cameron Brait and O.J. Howard how to be quality tight ends, how to learn the nuances of this offense with Tom Brady running the show. And you might be right about that, and that might be a, that's a very good point mm-hmm. to bring in. Let's discuss this offensive I mean, line with Tampa Bay. He is a veteran Bay, tight though. end that's won yeah. multiple that's, Super Bowls. That's and, the key to this offensive line. And the Bucks need that yeah. that guidance at that position, especially with OJ Howard, is one thing he could definitely use. Yeah. Now let's talk about this offensive line for Tampa Bay real quick. Yeah, too. let's do that because that is the key to the whole thing, right there. The key to me was the, <laughs> the right tackle they drafted in the first round. Yeah. And now is he going to be a starter? Is the thing or, I don't I don't see him being a yeah. starter right no, off the bat. He, he's yeah he's starting. Is he going to start yeah, right starting. off the bat? Uh, what's his name? Dotson's already gone. Yeah. So, uh, they, they've well, it's Donovan Smith's right. going to be shifting Donovan over to right Smith, tackle, no, or he's going to play left tackle. Stay at left tackle. Apparently, he's going to stay at left tackle for now. Mm. Um, I uh, we'll see what happens <laughs> on that. But but I'm, I'm yeah. but hey, you know what? There were times last year when Donovan Smith did play very well. So I'm not going to throw Donovan Smith completely under the bus, even though I'm not a big fan of him. I'd rather see him shifted to right tackle uh, and see the rookie come in at left tackle. To be honest with you, but but from what I'm hearing, Jensen is on the same page with Brady. Um, Brady loves him. Um, getting rid of the butt sweats uh, and all that stuff that, that <laughs> it, literally that Jensen's had to deal with for years, stuff like that that bothers him during a football game yeah. too. So I think I think Brady is already coming. He's already – just think of this. Brady has already come in without even playing a game and has already helped this offensive line get better with, with just going out and practicing and getting in tone with these guys. So we think. I believe <laughs> I believe that. I truly believe yeah. that. But when you look at the NFC South division this year going into it – I, I mean, think Tom Brady makes anybody better. The, the, the Carolina team. Panthers have obviously taken a step backwards. Mm-hmm. I, I don't think the Atlanta Falcons have done anything to improve themselves. I, I agree with and you. And I think the New Orleans Saints are just a year older, and I, I think agree. that's actually going to affect them. So, I do, and now they have Jameis Winston riding the coattails of Drew Brees. Yeah, it, well, Thank God. Is he number three on the death chart, <laughs> or is he number two? We don't Taysom, even know. And, well, according to him, he's the greatest quarterback to ever yeah. play in New Orleans. So I mean, yeah, But Taysom Hill is obviously the number two quarterback, because yeah. that's what they signed I, In to. my opinion, Jameis Winston is the third. I, and I said this when he, was, when, he, when he signed there. I said mm-hmm. Jameis Winston's the third-string quarterback. Mm-hmm. And you know something else I did? did say in my in my draft video when uh when I did a draft video actually um I did say that Cam Newton this was the last thing I said about football uh Cam Newton would still be a free agent after the after the free after the it would take a long time it would and he's still right now to this very day out there on the free agency shoulder injuries yeah I, I mean it, it he's has, not I don't see be. him being signed by anyone mm. I really don't I I see him come and I and well, I said this like oh, 6 months ago he hasn't passed a physical you know, and that's the thing too, because I can because I, I can think of two teams right now that obviously need a quarterback. One's in Jacksonville, and one's in New England. You know, there's, well, apparently there's, there's, New England's going with the the, the the kid. What's his name? Jared um, Stidham. Yeah, Stid- Stidham. 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 Yeah, fourth round pick. I'm never. That, uh, that's apparently who I'm hearing that they're going with. Yeah, if that's the case, then I, I don't really see New England achieving much this season. I think it's Buffalo Bills for the taking in that AFC East division because I don't think the Dolphins have done much. Now I know you're a big Tua fan, uh, but I don't think he's going to get it done in year one. I'm not. I'm not that big of a Tua fan. Uh, I don't think he's a horrible quarterback. I'll uh, just say that. But I, I think the Dolphins made a mistake. I really do. I think there's, I think there's other players they could have gotten. I think they could have drafted the quarterback. Herbert would have been better, to be honest with you, for them. But, I mean, it's just certain things that I, I, I just think they made a mistake. I, I think they made a mistake. I think they could have gotten to a later. I think they could have drafted more. more. I mean, just think about this. I think they could have drafted more around him to protect him mm-hmm. and to help him in, his offensive, in, his, in, in that offense instead of drafting him and then really, in my opinion, getting left out of the mix on guys that they actually wanted with their picks, that, with those two other first-round picks that they had. They didn't get the guys that they wanted on their list. They settled for secondary guys. Mm-hmm. That, in my opinion, is not handling your draft right when you could have gotten Tua with one of those picks. Mm-hmm. That's the argument that I've had with a lot of people about this, and it's not that I'm not a big fan of Tua. I think Tua could be a great quarterback in this league. No doubt about it. The sky's the limit for him. Yeah. But I do think Miami made a mistake with where they drafted him. They took a very high, they, they took a very high pick on a guy who's a very high risk, who, who's not shown us that he can stay healthy through a college season yet. I mean, with the injuries he's had with the hip and all that. I mean, that, he, that just happened this last year. So he's still coming <laughs> back from that, in my opinion. And yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Fitzpatrick is the starter when we come down to it. No doubt. Well, I just look at the AFC East. It's, I think Buffalo could win this division at 9-7. and seven. 
Knicks, honestly. Yeah, I agree with you. I think they I think they will win the division. I don't know if they'll be nine and seven. I think yeah. they'll win the I look at the AFC Central, I don't see the Browns doing anything. I still think they're overrated. Uh Joe Burrow in Cincinnati. I